To introduce the premise of time travel, it is wise to present a short series of clarifications for certain terms and implications so as to dispel any preconceived notions the audience may have as to this content. To this end, allow me to posit a few rhetorical questions about time travel and attempt to answer them in an understandable manner. Time travel is, by literal definition, the motion of a person or object from one point in the space-time continuum to another. This can occur in any number of different ways, including motion through space instantly, or in zero time. Motion through time, without changing location in space. Motion in both space and time at once, or else becoming stationary and experiencing no motion of space or time at all. Because all matter energy in the space-time continuum is in constant motion, we are all, technically, time traveling, always. Time keeps passing through us even while we are relatively stationary only in a single, constant direction, called the standard arrow of entropy, or time. Thus, this single, ubiquitous direction of universal motion for all objects combined is considered the Hubble constant, rate of universal expansion, and approximated to be, on average, around the speed of light, or c. This constant rate of omnicosmic motions in a single, seventh, and otherwise physically impossible direction signifies time as momentum or acceleration in one half of a fourth spatial dimension, a full dimension being a scalar pair of opposite directions. Our present cosmos has three spatial dimensions, each a pair of opposite directions such that height equals up and down, width equals left and right, and length equals front and back. But it is also expanding homogeneously in a seventh direction, along the standard arrow of time. Modern astrophysicists debate whether there is merely empty void into which our cosmos is expanding or some strange attractor of exotic mass beyond the speed of light that is pulling our cosmos outward. Some speculate it is gravity from a cosmos beyond our own. According to modern string theorist quantum astrophysicists, our cosmos as it formed from the Big Bang, and as it exists now, is only one possible format for such a cosmos that could have arisen at the beginning of local universal time. Others may also exist. If one is already moving past to future in time at a relatively fixed constant rate, is it possible to accelerate or decelerate and even reverse one's motion in this direction also? The answer to this question is obvious, but on a cosmic scale depends entirely on the overall geometric shape of, and amount of mass in, our local universe. Earth is round, so it is noon on one side of the planet while it is midnight on the opposite side, such that the circumference of the planet's equator takes around 24 hours to rotate a full day. A person nowadays can board an airplane and travel at around 30,000 feet above Earth's surface at around 500 miles per hour, which is about one half the velocity of Earth's rotation, occurring at a rate of around 1,000 miles per hour. If they do so traveling opposite the direction of Earth's rotation, that being from west to east, thus traveling east to west. 
that person will arrive in an earlier time zone in the same day as they departed and, if they travel in the same direction as Earth's rotation, thus traveling west to east, they will arrive in a later time zone than the one from which they started. The common result of this is jet lag, where a traveler's circadian rhythms and biological clock must take some time to adapt and reset to the difference in the timing of the daylight and nighttime hours at their new location on Earth's spherical surface. Jet lag is a symptom of adaptation to an alteration in one's temporal environment that occurs on the scale of people traveling over the surface of planet Earth. But these differences in temporal environment only occur on Earth due to the planet's regular rotational duration so-called days, and revolutionary cycle around the sun, so-called years. Because of these closed geometric parameters, we may experience jet lag as a byproduct from a kind of time travel, changing from one hour-long time zone to another, as we traverse the spherical geometry of planet Earth but we do not yet know the exact dimensions nor shape of our own entire cosmos. It is held by astrophysicists and mathematicians that there may be at least three different possible shapes the cosmos could take overall, and depending on which of these three shapes it takes, which again depends on its amount of mass and its velocity of propulsion, the cosmos may have one of three different types of outcome for its overall history across all time. If the cosmos has a closed geometry, then the whole cosmos will eventually assume a basically spherical shape, and this will expand until reaching a point of critical mass, at which point it will begin to collapse in on itself in what some call a big crunch. If the cosmos has a flat geometry, then the whole cosmos will eventually assume a basic planar shape, and this will expand until it reaches a point of critical mass, and then simply stop exhibiting entropy, presumably freezing all motion into permanent stasis. And if the universe has an open geometry, then the whole cosmos will eventually assume a basic hyperbolic saddle shape, and this could continue expanding, and even increase in the rate thereof, without any innately predetermined ending. It is unlikely that the whole cosmos functions according to only one of these types of geometry alone, in its entirety, and it is more likely that the current cosmos exhibits traits indicative of all three of these types, differing in geometry in different locations of space-time as well as other, as of yet unpredicted and unexplored, shapes and geometries beyond merely these three. What can be said with certainty, however, is that where space-time forms regular cycles, time travel, between points on these, may more easily occur. Consider point A in space-time as coordinates A1, B1, C1, T1, for its location in three dimensions and in time, and point B in space-time, as coordinates X1, Y1, Z1, T1, some distance away from point A, but occurring simultaneously to point A within the same physical cosmos. Say you wanted to travel from point A to point B, leaving point A at time 1 and arriving at point B simultaneously at time 1, regardless of the distance in space between points A and B. This is popularly called folding space-time, which can be done in any of a variety of patterns if one can generate a strong enough gravity wave to attain hyperspatial speeds without destroying themselves and or their surroundings in the process. 
To attain hyperspatial or faster than light speeds may be accomplished in a number of different ways as well, such as, at least, quantum teleportation via a wormhole, or a gravitational engine, aka a time machine. It is not thought a traversable wormhole would necessarily require a vessel to protect one's body, such as a time machine provides, although it is hypothesized that to stabilize a wormhole long enough to step through it would probably require some kind of very high energy device to accomplish. Hyperspace the energy field outside of and beyond local universal light speed may provide near zero resistance and friction, but it is generally thought that to weather the inertial distortion on a person from traveling up to such speeds, a vessel would be useful to protect one's biological body. In this case, the time machine may be viewed as a, like a decompression chamber, preventing one from getting the bends after too rapid a change to environmental pressure. Perhaps it could be reasoned inanimate objects may safely traverse a wormhole, but living biological tissue is better guarded all around by some form of vessel. In theory, inside this vessel, one may retain their own innate inertia while traveling at near relativistic light and even hyperspatial speeds. Anything or anyone's innate inertia, that is, its condition of being relatively more mobile or more stationary, constitutes an open temporal lock, that is, the inertia of the thing or person, and that of their surrounding environment, are the same. The individual's temporal key, their inertia as an object of matter or, to the extent they are energetic, their innate soul or unique personal electromagnetic energy field, and their environmental temporal lock, the temporal cycles of their area, fit, and thus form an open position. However, when this key is removed from this lock, not only must it adapt to fit a new and different temporal lock, but the lock it used to fit, and that was formerly open to it, closes. If one changes their temporal lock, one must change their own temporal key to fit the new lock. And, if one wishes to return, one must change their own key to what their former lock has by then become. This inertia, aura, or key itself, is innately more stable than the environmental lock, as the environment changes constantly at a much more rapid rate than the individual can usually adapt to it. The summing of all this amounts to entropy, the lagging of the key behind the lock until the lock has changed so much the key, even if relatively unchanging itself, no longer fits. From the 1600s Enlightenment era, writings of Isaac Newton came the long-held concept of absolute or invariant time, the premise that, behind all motions of matter and energy, remained a fixed, inviolable, and unmoving vacuum, or void, and that this remains still and motionless for the entire duration of the cosmos's existence. By the early 1900s, this notion had been transferred onto the concept of ether energy, or vacuum energy, which a young physicist named Albert Einstein proposed was also constantly in motion itself, however, at the microwave background radiation velocity of C, 
the constant rate, symbolizing the speed of light, or the speed of a photon in perfect vacuum, equal to one Planck distance per one Planck time. An early example of time variance, as opposed to invariant or absolute time, was allowed by Einstein's relativity principles of 1905. Time dilation was posited as possible such that, as in the twin paradox, a person traveling in space at near relativistic speeds will age slower than a person who remains on Earth, and likewise, due to the relativistic equivalency and effect of acceleration and gravity in vacuum space, a clock sunk deeper into a gravity well, or a core centralization of the force of gravity, such as, in an extreme case, a black hole, will tick slower than another identical one kept further away. Time, as a measure of inertia, changes relative to location in space. Also allowed by the distance metric of Einstein's general relativity, a cosmos could come into existence, similar to our own, only universally rotating instead of expanding. In this premise, referred to as the Gödel metric, the trajectories of objects may intersect themselves in closed time-like curves, such that a point in an object's effective future vector may be also found in its causal past trajectory. This is, in some sense, alike planetary and even electron orbits in our own cosmos, only occurring such that a future event on any given orbit may affect a past event along the same course. The closest approximation to such phenomenon we find in our own cosmos, which is universally expanding rather than rotating, are wormholes, theoretically traversable zero-time portals that puncture the continuum to connect distant points in space to one another instantaneously. Such a wormhole, sometimes called an Einstein-Rosen bridge, is simply a larger version of the same effect that occurs as quantum tunneling in the very small realm of subatomic electron orbital energy level shells, when an electron is struck by a photon or when it changes its orbital energy level shell. Different amounts of electromagnetic quanta stabilize in any orbital energy level shell around an atomic nucleus, thus forming the classical elements of chemistry. However, the shape of these orbits and why exactly they resonate into stable patterns, only given certain electron charges remain at present 2018 Mysteries of Quantum Gravity. Very recent evidence of faster than light or FTL, gravity waves, may prove the long-premised conjecture that matter energy, moving faster than the speed of light, will travel backwards in time. The general example is of a signal pulsed at near-relativistic speeds and a signal pulsed FTL, wherein the signal pulsed at near-relativistic speeds will arrive with near simultaneity to when it was transmitted, but the signal pulsed at FTL speeds may literally arrive prior to the moment of its initially being broadcast. According to Greenberger and Sfazel, the uncertainty principle apparently allowing such quantum tunneling, either FTL or not, also allows a collapse of wave function from a more random condition, such as quantum superposition, exemplified by Schrodinger's cat being at once both alive and dead, into a standing wave state, or a relatively more stable condition, 
such as being only either alive or dead. Thus, by the criteria of their theory, the past when observed from the present collapses into a singular deterministic condition. However, the future, when observed from the present, remains in a condition of constant flux between many different possible options. When we act as choice maker for an outcome in a situation, then the future becomes the present, the present becomes the past, and our options immediately appear to have been necessary and unavoidable. Illogical things do exist, and illogical acts yet persist even now, as is all too obvious looking around. Therefore, it is not possible for everything to constantly adhere to logic and, to the extent there is deviation from logic in reality, there may exist irrational, vague, temporal paradoxes instead of logical, axiomatic, physical laws in these mysterious regions. It is posited that modal logic may prove time self-consistent, that is to say, quote, if it is necessarily true that the past happened in a certain way, then it is false and impossible for the past to have occurred in any other way, end quote. In short, if the past is deterministically inalterable, then a traveler to it from the future, could only behave while in the past according to an increasingly unavoidable series of causes and effects which they would experience encroaching on their own independent free will. No matter what the traveler would do to avoid fate, it would only all that much more ensure the predestined outcome. According to this Novikov self-consistency principle. The past cannot be changed. Doing so is so illogically inconsistent as to be physically impossible. The reason temporal self-consistency is considered a principle of time travel science is that it resolves the grandfather paradox without violating chronological cause and effect. The grandfather paradox results in increasing inconsistencies emerging in the future as a result of changing the past. The premise of this paradox is that if one had a time machine, they may be able to travel back in time to either kill their grandfather, commit auto-infanticide by killing their own younger self, or otherwise attempt to prevent themselves from having traveled back in time to begin with. To the extent they could succeed, it creates a logical conundrum that apparently contradicts the physical laws of the cosmic continuum. But this paradox is just the tip of the iceberg. In theory, a time loop may exist wherein, when an arbitrary condition is met, such as a death experience or a clock tolling, etc., the events begin again with one or more people retaining the memories from the previous loop. Although they may appear more similar or unique each repeat, time loops always reset to the same starting point. Another theory explains causal loops, which are autocorrelated, isomorphic, self-originating, stable constants. An example of a causal loop would be a billiard ball striking its own past self and directing its course into a time machine or wormhole that ejects it so that it strikes itself and directs its course into the time machine or wormhole, etc., 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 ad infinitum. Referring to any object, person, or signal, whose effects include causing itself. 
causal loops appear to come from nowhere or to be self-perpetuating. The most common name for an event that results in a causal loop is a bootstrap paradox, also called an information paradox or ontological paradox. The most telling name for the result of a bootstrap paradox is Jin, coined by Andrei Losev and Igor Novikov in 1992, where objects without origin are called Jin of the first kind and pure data with a similar self-referential start are called Jin of the second kind. Another term for these causal loops, or JIN, is closed time-like curves, or CTCs, so-called for being the result of a usually straight timeline becoming warped into an isomorphic knot. Stephen Hawking's 1992 proposal of a chronology protection conjecture attempts to limit the influence of these JIN or CTCs as being confined to only sub-microscopic events, presumably accounting for such subatomic interconnectivities as proposed by the Bohm interpretation, including quantum teleportation, quantum tunneling, and presumably resolving the EPR paradox or Einstein-Podolsky-Rosen paradox for the effect of quantum entanglement that Einstein called spooky action at a distance. Along similar trajectories, in 1991, David Deutsch proposed that a time traveler into the past whom causes change there would fall into a form of parallel timeline or alternate dimension type of scenario, modified from Hugh Everett III's Many Worlds Interpretation, or MWI. However, such a time traveler whom altered the past would, themselves, maintain a self-consistent personal timeline, thus allowing the Novikov self-consistency principle and the chronology protection conjecture to account for any extra energy this generated, which would otherwise violate the second law of thermodynamics, as being absorbed back into a primary or mainstream world line. For this reason, the interacting MWI of parallel dimensional timelines that could be exchanged for one another through a time travel or CTC type of event, although probably validly accurate when combined with Hawking's premise that antitemporal events can only occur on the smallest size scales, remains relatively unexplored since.